Hey everybody, this video is going to serve as the introduction and overview video for elasticities. And elasticities can cause students a lot of stress because it seems like it's really complicated. And in some ways it is. I mean, elasticity is a complex idea. But if you lay it down in your mind in little segments and you go slowly and you remember that something that is elastic responds to a force. If you think about a rubber band, a rubber band is just a piece of, of rubber that when you apply a force to it, it bends. And if the rubber band responds a lot to, the, to, to a force, and then you apply that same force, the same exact force, to a different rubber band, but the rubber band doesn't quite stretch as much, you would say that the second rubber band is more inelastic than the first rubber band. Or the first rubber band is more elastic in reference to the second rubber band. So elasticity is a measure of responsiveness to a particular force. If you have a rubber band and you pull it with one hand, it's responding, the rubber band is showing you the elasticity of the rubber band according to the force. And so in economics, of course we're not talking about rubber bands, right? We're talking about forces applied to the quantity demanded of a particular product. So check it out. There are only four kinds of elasticity. There are price elasticity of demand, cross elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, and price elasticity of supply. Okay, so what's the force here? Well, in the first three, we're looking at demand. So the force is going to be price. We're looking at demand. The force is going to be cross elasticity. The cross means that you're going to cross from your product to a different product. Coca-Cola is going to look at the responsiveness of demand to its product when the price of, say, Pepsi changes, okay? And income elasticity of demand, you're looking at the demand for your product based on the incomes of people in society. If incomes go up, what changes in the demand for your particular product? The last one is price elasticity of supply. How quickly can suppliers change their supply if there's a change in price? Okay, so let me go through it again. Elasticity is really cool because it tells you a lot about a particular product and how responsive it is, how, how responsive in the case of demand, the demand is to a change in price. So if the price of something changes a lot, how much, how elastic is the demand? In the case of, say, cigarettes, where people are addicted to cigarettes, if you jack up the price of cigarettes, they're probably not, the demand for cigarettes is not going to go down as much because people are addicted to it. So it's relatively inelastic as opposed to jacking up the price of a soft drink. Soft drinks, people can be like, well, I'll just buy something else, right? Or I'll drink water. It's practically free. So the cigarettes are going to be more inelastic than the price at a price change, right? The force here is price, a change in price of a soft drink. Okay. Demand, cross elasticity of demand. Well, how much is the quantity demanded going to change of your product, my, of your particular product, if the price of something else changes? So check it out. What if you have a pizza place and you are interested in how much it's going to, if there is a hamburger stand that goes up right in front of your pizza place, what about a change in price of the hamburger? How elastic, how responsive is the, de the quantity demand or the demand for your particular pizza going to be affected by the change in price of the hamburgers? The thing that's cool about cross-elasticity of demand is it tells us what the relationship is between the product that we have and another product. So, for example, if you own Coca-Cola, first of all, congratulations, you're filthy rich. Second of all, you would want to know if the price changes of Pepsi how much is that going to change the demand of Coca-Cola? And what you would see is that if, if Pepsi drops its price, and assuming people don't love Coke just because it's Coca-Cola, but they're just looking for a general cola drink, then you're going to find out that, hey, wow, people are going to go buy Pepsi because the price dropped, and the demand, even though I haven't changed price of Coca-Cola, is going to drop significantly because these people are going to go buy Pepsi. So those you would find out that your goods, Coke and Pepsi, are substitutes of one another. The other thing that's cool about cross-elasticity of demand is it tells us the nature of the product and finds out if there are any complements. For example, 
if you um, uh, if you own Amazon, congratulations, you have a lot of money. What could you do if you created a product, say a Kindle, and you dropped the price of Kindle? What would happen to the demand of eBooks? We'll check it out. If everybody has a Kindle and you make it cheaper and more Kindles are bought in the marketplace, guess what? That is going to increase the demand of eBooks because the only way that you can you can uh, consume an eBook, let's say there are no other e-readers out there, is through the price um, is through a Kindle. So if Kindles get cheap and more people are buying Kindles, the demand for eBooks is going to go up. Pretty cool. So what are those? Those are compliments, right? Income elasticity demand is going to talk about the nature of your particular product. Is if, if, if incomes go up and you have a normal good, then the demand for your good should go up. So if you have a normal good like, say, uh, you sell T-shirts and you have a T-shirt company and incomes in your particular country, and I live in Chile, let's say that incomes in Chile on average go up, you can expect an increase in demand of T-shirts at every price point. So that means you have a normal good. But if you sell something like uh, cheap wine, like one of the things that people stop buying when they start making more money, right, is cheap wine. They're going to start buying better wine. So the demand for cheap wine, if it's seen as an inferior good, is actually going to go down relative to people's income. And so if you're starting a business and you're interested, if incomes are going up in a particular country, hey, it would probably be best to, to invest in a product that's a normal good. However, if there's an economic crisis like what happened in the United States in 2008, did you know that dollar store stocks actually increased in value because people, because they lost income, started buying cheaper goods? As their incomes have come back, they've stopped buying those things, but those are, in, those are because they are inferior goods. So income elasticity of demand will tell you if your product is a normal good or an inferior good. If incomes go up and the demand for your product goes up, then you have a normal good. If incomes go up and the demand for your good goes down, then you know you have an inferior good, and of course the opposite is true. And lastly, the price elasticity of supply is simply price elasticity of demand, but from the perspective of suppliers. So if you supply something, how quickly, how elastic are you to being able to supply something to the marketplace based on price? If you own a mining company and you're in Chile and you have to invest millions of dollars in order to extract more copper and the price goes up, Guess what? Your elasticity is, you're relatively inelastic. You cannot respond as much as, say, a supplier of, I don't know, flip-flops, right? If flip-flops become really cool and it's summertime and you produce flip-flops, well, you can produce, increase the supply of flip-flops really fast, right? At relative, at least relative to mining copper. So you would say that the, the, the elasticity of supply, the price elasticity of supply for flip-flops is more elastic that when compared to copper. So don't fear the elasticities. They are not, once you get them in your mind, um, they're really fascinating. They're great for evaluation questions. And you really can sink your head into elasticities and really find out and, and that, that, that you can find out so much about a particular product. And all of this is really helpful to producers in society. All right, I hope you found this introductory uh, video helpful. And I'm looking forward to talking to you in a bit.